Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Tethers Nation. Hopefully you're doing well. We hope you're safe during this COVID outbreak. We hope you're staying motivated and continuing to train. For many of you, we know that is a struggle due to limited facilities and whatnot. But remember, you can still get outside. You can still do a lot of drills, try to throw when you can. And remember, the biggest thing is to learn. So we're gonna try to do our part, increase our posts, put out more information to help you guys learn more. For those of you who'd like a little more information, be sure to check the links in the description. Be sure to check out some of our free weekly throws workshops that we're hosting online. So you guys stay safe, healthy, be sure to like, subscribe. So check out today's video. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Tate Throws Nation, and in today's video, we are going to break down a little video analysis, go in depth on the stuff we covered this week on Instagram, and give you a little bit more information behind the post. So this is a freshman thrower, he's only 14 years old, and he's never thrown before, and he's doing a lot of common mistakes. And the reason is, throwing's unnatural. What he's trying to learn is unnatural. What he's doing is natural, and that's one of the challenges that a lot of throwers face. Here we're doing what we call as modified wheel or a half turn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch him take a throw and you're gonna see that disc is kind of flutter and we're gonna check that out. So freshman never thrown and literally in the first week the discus was coming out of the back of his hand which is happens not to everybody but it does happen to many young throwers. So one of the things we'd been working on is working on his release, how to carry the discus. And what you don't see is that this athlete's actually made a lot of progress and like a lot of athletes, he's very much uh, thinking about the throw, he's trying to do exactly what he's told. So it gets, he like overthinks slightly. And so he's one of the, athletes that I would say the discus and the shot put are not super natural. He's not a overly big, naturally physically gifted athlete, but he's got a great attitude and he's willing to work hard. So he's made good progress. And because the stand throw and the release started to get better and the discus is coming out of the front of his hand, we obviously wanted to go to the next phase. Now, what we call here, we call this a modified wheel in the throwing chain reaction system. A lot of people call it a half turn or a 180, but what we're specifically looking on is how we set the throw up. So he does a pretty nice job. We have a slight pre-turn, we have the alignment here, but the alignment you're going to notice on this foot, it should be over a little bit more, so it's going to be able to move around in here. Now, I was standing at the time when they're coaching, I'm on the side angle, and you can see he has it partially set up, but not quite enough. One of the other things is we're trying to teach the athlete how to carry the discus, so he's still having some adjustment phase, and you're gonna notice that everything's in a pretty good position. He's got the two fingers together, and that's gonna help him to get a better release. But what he's not used to now is what we refer to in our system is the pillars, right? The throw happens in two seconds. How do we break down two seconds and train two seconds? You can't think about five things. You have to be able to break that down, and that's what our pillars are. The half turn, we consider the end of pillar three, four, five, six, and that's what we're working on. As we work here, we're trying to teach him how to push and how we're trying to teach him the correct path of this leg and how this is going to create a transfer of weight from the left leg to the right leg, just like you would see in the throw, and how that this arm is going to be moving around and opening. Now, at first glance, it doesn't look too bad, but what you're gonna see right here is that he actually loses the discus and you're gonna notice that he doesn't push off here first He's going to, because of that, the upper body is going to get active and the discus is going to catch up. Now there's a little bit of an issue with the way his hand carry is, and this is a small detail that you wanna check out because he's still trying to feel the discus in the next phase, right? When we do a stand throw, he can connect better. Now that we're trying to connect pillars three and four to five and six, we consider a stand throw pillar five and six. What we're going to see is that he starts to unwind the upper body. So if you look here at this angle, you're gonna notice this foot, you're gonna notice this foot, and watch the discus. The discus starts here, look at the feet. Okay, click, 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 click. Feet aren't moving, discus is moving. Left foot starts to move right there. Okay, and now he actually goes into a nice delivery side position, but he's he's rotated the upper body here. Everything's catching up, so by the time you see here, he's got the hips and the shoulders facing the same direction that you can see on this angle, there's no discus. You would, you would ideally wanna see the discus sitting here. So it's now it's crept up. 
what happens is he winds up getting this little baby push. You see how it's trailing? So now the upper body is heading. It's going to be getting in front of the lower body. So you're going to be losing the sling. So what's happening is, is by the time he gets to this position, he doesn't put this down. He wants to start the throw. The shoulder comes around too far on the block side. And then he's trying to throw before that foot's really down. And you can see right there, it kind of comes down. And then as he delivers, now you're going to see that the thumb comes up. So you're gonna see right here, the thumb is straight up instead of the plate being straight down. And now that's gonna create the wobble. But you'll notice he actually has a pretty decent block arm. The right leg action wasn't bad, but he's too active with the upper body. And again, that's what's natural. So the point of the, today's video is to kind of just give you a little more insights. Many athletes and coaches are gonna to relate to this thrower because that is the majority of new throwers. They're new. There's lots of throwers that go from that 50 foot range in the discus to a hundred and some feet. We see those big jumps all the time because the changes that you'll make between zero and hundred feet are so significant. It'll be easier to throw hundred feet than it is to throw 60 feet. So here we go. We just wanted to kind of give you a little insight. A lot of you guys are doing some of those same things. Simply, you want to make sure that when you set up this foot, you want to make sure that that action is going to be helping move the whole system. That's going to help keep the discus back. And you can see here, this would give an ample time to have this leg continue to rotate into a block. You would be able to set up the delivery leg better. He would have a better high point of the discus that would be up here. So that discus should be as he comes this way. We would want to see that discus more here or maybe even here, but we would want to see the shoulder down. That creates a little shift forward. And then again, he's trying to figure out how that works. And it's kind of after the fact. And again, that's normal. Um, hopefully this was a little bit helpful. What we want to do is encourage you to check out our free course on rotational throwing using throwing chain reaction and learning more about the six pillars. If you like today's video, be sure to comment, give us a thumbs up, uh, spread the word. You guys stay healthy and safe and we will see you on the next video.